in a non-COVID year, I would have us get together and hold hands. But instead of doing that, let me get you just stretch your arms out toward the person next to you. And let's, in a way, reach out toward one another and let's pray together. Father, we come to you this morning as a family, as a body of believers, acknowledging that you have already won. And we may be in a spot where it feels like we're in the middle of a battle. And it may even seem hopeless to some. Yet, Father, you have already won. You've sent us a Savior. Thank you for the music that has turned our hearts toward you. Holy Spirit, would you continue to work and to draw our hearts, open our hearts and our minds to the fact that we have a Savior who has already won. And we can live in victory because of Jesus. We celebrate what you have given us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can have a seat. Thank you, praise team. Uh, I'm excited to be a part of our Christmas Eve service. I, as I said last week, I really wish that it wasn't a COVID year. Because Christmas Eve candlelight service is really one of my favorite things that we do around here. I love it. Um, in spite of us not meeting in person, I want to invite you to be intentional this year. If, if you plan on participating, even if for some reason you have something going on and you're not going to, but you want to invite someone, grab one of the candle packets and be intentional and invite them to participate with us. There's QR codes where all they have to do is scan and they can participate with us online. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and uh, this has always been an outreach for our church. And I want to invite you to continue to do what you do well, and that is invite others to participate. If you're a guest this morning, thank you for being here. I want to speak to our church members and extended family. This has been a hard week for a lot of our church family. Uh, with the loss of two members, one of them that's moved off, but we still consider them members, and then... Uh, Mike Zessage that passed away yesterday, and Suzanne earlier this week. Um, God knows our pain. God knows our hurt. Some of you may already have lost family members uh, with all that's going on this year. I want you to hear that God knows and He is still in control. He is still on His throne. And for all that we've gone through, He is still Lord. And so we worship Him. This isn't how I really planned on starting the worship service or starting the sermon portion. I had every intention of starting with more of a cheery aspect, but I just felt the need to speak to what's going on in our church family. Know that we love one another. We love those who we have lost, and God knows our hurt and our pain, and He speaks to us through that. In spite of all this, the truth is that we still celebrate the reality that Jesus was born in human flesh, dwelt among us for the purpose of dying for us so that we can have a relationship with Him today and a place to live in eternity. We celebrate Jesus. We can be in hurt and pain. We can be struggling with a lot of stuff going on in our lives. But that, calls us, that gives us even more reason to celebrate what Jesus has done because Jesus tells us that this is not the end. This life is not the end of life. We have a life beyond this with our Savior. This is what, what makes Christianity unique and different from every other religion and philosophy of life. Every other religion and philosophy is about humanity trying to get to God or become God. Christianity is about God coming to us. And that's what all these songs have been about that we've sung this morning. Is God came to us and dwelt among us. 
Now, today's not going to be the traditional Christmas message, but we are going to be in a traditional Christmas passage. We're going to be in Matthew 1. We're going to have a lot of other scriptures. Matthew 1, 18 through 25 is our focal passage. But before we get to that passage, let me ask you a question to kind of center our thoughts around this. What comes to mind when you think of Christmas? Let me just pause and give you a moment to thank you. What comes to mind when you think of Christmas? Might be time with family. Might be setting up holiday stuff and Christmas decorations. It might be stress that comes with that and uh, burdens and maybe memories of things that didn't go well. There's so many things that <laughs> culturally we've wrapped around Christmas and I appreciate exactly what Thomas had to say about Christmas and, and what this can be and really should be for us as a reset around God and the gift of Jesus that he's given us. And the gospel is Christmas, and Christmas is the gospel. Where it really boils it down to God gave us something that we don't deserve. That, of course, is Jesus. And Jesus points us back to the Father who loves us and wants us to enter into a relationship with him, not just a one-time for eternity relationship, but an everyday, daily time where we enter into His presence and center our hearts on Him. So Matthew 1, 18-25. Now the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When His mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Verse 22 Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And that verse right there is a quote from Isaiah uh, 714, which we started off. Let me read verse 22 again. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Verse 23, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but he knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Let's pray again. Father, we come to you once again thanking you for Jesus. And Father, we ask that your Spirit would speak to us even more. Lord, we know that you're here because you promised you would be here where two or three are gathered together. So we know you're here. Yet, Father, we need to hear from you. We acknowledge that this time of year brings so much, yet it should bring us right back to you. So would you continue to do that in Jesus' name? Amen. We just finished this series, We Believe, going through the Apostles' Creed. And in that statement, if you remember, it says that in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. To an unbelieving world, this is quite unbelievable. Think about this. A young girl conceived not by two humans coming together, but conceived by God, and the baby himself was and is God. That sounds ridiculous to an unbelieving world, yet to every one of us who have entered into a relationship with Jesus, we know the fact and we have experienced the truth that Jesus dwells in us. We know that the same Jesus is the gift that all humanity is crying out for and in need of. We are in a period right now where the COVID-19 vaccine is being shipped out specifically to uh, people being vaccinated, first-line responders and others. And you know, whether 
whatever your emotions are around that, we see that they're trying to come up with some way to help us out with, with this pandemic. Yet all humanity, past, present, and future, is infected with sin. Some people not even realize that they were infected, and God gave us not a vaccine, not a home remedy, but an eternal cure of our disease. And that's Jesus. So 2 Corinthians 9.15. I'm going to come back to this in a moment. Thanks be to God for His inexpressible gift. Thanks be to God for His inexpressible gift. We passed Thanksgiving, but we don't need to stop being grateful. Gratitude for Jesus is a daily event for what He has done and what He is constantly doing. Thomas read the verse earlier. He didn't know I was going to come to this. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life life for God so loved the world that he gave God's gift to us is Jesus I'm going to give you three observations around this gift of Jesus they're not life shattering Uh, I think you if you have a relationship with Jesus this is something you probably already know but sometimes we just need to come back to the basics around Jesus and refocus ourselves with him first of all I'm going to spend uh, most of my time with this first point, around this first observation. The gift is Jesus Christ Himself. God gave us His Son, for God so loved that He gave. Now, what does it mean that we receive Jesus? What what does that really mean? The gift God offers us is to be known and loved by Christ Himself. I want you to think about this. God knows everything about you. Everything about you. Your idiosyncrasies, your favorite flavors, your past, the things you're struggling with today. God knows everything about you. And here's the thing about this gift of Jesus. The gift God offers us is to be known and loved by Jesus. The gift God gives us is knowing us and loving us in spite of us. This is the gift of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 8.3 But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. St. Augustine said this. This is a prayer he prayed. Grant, Lord, that I may know myself, that I may know Thee. What does that mean? Here's what St. Augustine was saying. Sometimes in today's language, we we put it in something that he's not intending. St. Augustine was saying, God, help me to understand myself. Help me to understand my heart, my wickedness that I'm bent toward so that I can understand the depths of your love. That's the point St. Augustine is, is wanting us to know is when we understand ourselves, and our bents, our sin nature, we really fully understand the depths of God's love. John fifteen fifteen. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Jesus Christ eternally changed the nature of our relationship. With God. We're no longer called servants. Jesus calls us friends. John 17, 3. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This is what God is offering us. When we say God has given us Jesus, He's given us the fact that He knows us completely and loves us completely. And it's changed the nature of our relationship, how we relate to the Father. John Calvin said this, knowledge of God begins with knowledge of self. So let me ask you, how has your knowledge of who you are changed the nature of how you relate with your Father in heaven? See, when I am introspective, when I look at myself and I see William, for everything that he is, 
what it helps me to do is say, Father, sometimes I don't understand how and why you can love me. Yet, I am eternally grateful. And it helps me to point myself that I don't have to live in fear and shame. I don't have to live in regret. I can live in victory because of Jesus, not because of me, but because of all that He has done for me. The song we just sang. 1 John 1, 3. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. What, what God is giving us in Jesus is a relationship through His Son, not about rules, regulation, or religion. If Jesus is our gift, the meaning of that gift is to be fully known by God. What it is, is what is it that you are fearful of others finding out, out about you? If God fully knows you, what is it that you are fearful of someone else finding out? Here's what you don't have to be worrisome about. Is that God already knows it. He loves you in spite of it. And you can live in freedom from it. Entering into a relationship with God. I'm going to get into this. I'm jumping ahead just a moment. But by entering into a relationship with the Father, you're also entering into a relationship with the Father's family. And you don't have to be fearful of others finding out because as a family, we share, we understand, and we love. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus, that is what you're missing out on, is one, being known by the Father, but then being loved by the Father's family. The second observation, and I'll move a little quicker through these next two. Before I get to it, though, do you know the Father? Are you experiencing freedom? And the fact that the Father knows you completely. So there's the second one, observation on the screen. The gift has great value. This gift of Jesus is more valuable than anything you could ever possess. Matthew 13, 44-46. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. The kingdom that Jesus is speaking about is this relationship with the Father, the Holy Spirit living inside of us, and then later on in eternity, we participate in the kingdom and rule with Jesus. But this relationship is of great value to us, not for money, for possessions, but the fact of being known and loved by God Himself. 2 Corinthians 9.15, we used it a while ago. Thanks be to God for His inexpressible gift. The gratitude that we can have and as believers will have once you're focused on, on what God has given to you, it, it's an eternal spring that wells up. Father, thank you for loving me. You know my past, you know my present, you know my future. And you love me in spite of me. What is your most valuable possession? We can dwell on this. We can think of finances and stock markets. We can think of possessions, material things. We can think of family and maybe memories we've had. The gift of Jesus is, a, is not just a one-time prayer, but a daily personal relationship. It's a relationship that is the pearl of great price because Jesus constantly points us back to the Father. He's constantly pointing us back to Him. John 14, 10. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells 
in me does His works. Jesus constantly points us back to the Father who loves us. Now, a lot of us have wrapped things around our Heavenly Father that maybe we experience by our earthly dad. Let me invite you to ask the Father to help you shed those things because our Heavenly Father is a perfect Father. Your earthly father wasn't perfect. And maybe he was a good man who just didn't know certain things. Maybe your, heavenly, your earthly father did some bad things, said some bad things. Your heavenly father is perfect and loves you no matter what you've been through. The last observation here this gift must be received we each have to make this decision it is a personal decision to relate to the father to ask jesus into your life but receiving jesus is not about being good or a religious person it's about and it's not about your parents or grandparents going to church and being good and all that kind of stuff. Receiving Jesus is something you do personally by asking the Father to enter into a relationship with Him. John 1, 11-13. He came into His own, and His own people did not receive Him. But to all who did receive Him, who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So receiving Jesus means you get to be a part of God's family with a loving Father. It's a personal decision that then expands into a family by receiving Jesus. Now, this Christmas you're going to receive some gifts. Maybe in the past you've received some gifts and it wasn't necessarily your favorite gift. You know, you opened it up and you said, oh, Socks, okay, you know, or you know, whatever the case may be. That's not what God has given us. God's gift of Jesus is not something that we say thank you and then put it in a drawer, set it on a shelf, and leave it alone. The gift of Jesus is something that is meant to be used, something that is meant to be received and active daily in our lives. Jesus is not just about Christmas and Easter. Jesus is for every day. He's not just for Sunday. He's for every day. He's for time with family, even family members you struggle with. He's for time at work. He's for time when you're recreating. Jesus is for every day and every moment. Receiving Jesus is something that happens in our lives, but we use, rely, and depend on Jesus and the gospel every day. We need Jesus all the time. Now, I, like I said earlier, this is nothing, not rocket science. Most of you already know these things, but Christmas is the gospel boiled down. God giving us a gift. We could never earn, never pay back something we don't deserve. Thomas put it best. It, it helps us recenter and refocus, at a time, especially this year when everything's been so chaotic, hectic, and off-centered. This time of year can help us focus back. God, help me to be grateful for what you've given me. Help me to recenter my heart around what you are doing in my life, regardless of all the stuff that's going on in our world today. Here's the bottom line God sent Jesus to us because we had no way to get to him. We have a Savior. God gave us a Savior. So let me ask you what is it that is burdening and troubling your heart today? If you have a relationship with Jesus, you've already invited Him in, are you allowing God to save you from that today? See, a Savior saves us eternally, but He saves us daily as well.
So what is it that's going on in your heart and mind? Are you burdened by the weight of sin? Sin. Are you burdened by the weight of worries and fears of sickness and all this other stuff going on in our society right now? He saves us from that. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, shall call His name Emmanuel. God with us. God is with you. If you have not entered into a relationship with God, with Jesus, this God who came to dwell among us as a baby, lived a perfect life, died on a cross, rose again, and ascended into heaven, this gift of a baby, it's God's gift to you. It's a relationship both today and for eternity. Have you received this gift? Here's a question for all of us. Is Christmas just a season to endure for you? Or is it a celebration of the perfect gift? Let me ask you to bow your head and close your eyes for a moment. I, I, I've never experienced a Christmas season like this one, what's going on in our world and in our society. I don't think any of us have. And in our community, especially in our church, there's other burdens that we have and concerns we have. Losing loss, losing loved ones and hurts and concerns that are going on. This is an invitation to go to our Father and say, Father, would you help me to refocus on the gift that you've given to understand what Jesus is today for me and for those around me. The gift of Jesus is being known by the Father for all that we've done and have and will do. And He loves us com completely in spite of us. If you don't know Jesus, let me invite you to come talk with me either after the service. Let's set up a time where we can talk. If you're online, you're watching, you don't know Jesus, you can hit the send email button on Facebook or send us an email. We'll set up a time where we can communicate. Jesus heals. Jesus restores. Jesus gives life and hope where there is no life and hope. We have a Savior. And His name is Jesus. Father, we come to You this morning thanking You for Jesus. Lord, what we see because of Jesus is You have provided something that we could never earn. We could never pay back. And we say thank You for Your inexpressible gift. We say thank You for providing a way to us because we could never get to You. Father, I pray for everyone in here. For the hurts and pains, for the burdens, for the celebrations and time with family that, that can be what we want it to be. Father, we ask that You would root our hearts and minds around what You have done for us. And to celebrate what Jesus is and will be for us now and for eternity. Thank You for Jesus. Thank You for our Savior. It's in His beautiful name we pray. Amen. Thank You for being here. If there's anything we can do for you, please let us know.